One hundred years ago, the idea of preserving some of America's natural wonders for all the people for all time began to be realized with the creation of the world's first national park. Since that time, some 300 parks, monuments, recreation areas, and historic sites have been added to our national park system. Today, all of these are yours to enjoy, yours to explore. I'm Martin Litton. As a travel writer, I've spent a lot of time driving the back roads and hiking the trails of our national park areas. If you do much exploring in the parks and monuments, it won't take you long to find out that the wealth of enjoyment they offer is more than you can hope to experience in a lifetime. Let's look at a few examples. Yellowstone, the first national park. Well, when you're there, it doesn't take long to understand why early explorers were astounded by Yellowstone. Its geysers, hot springs, steam vents, bubbling mud lakes, and churning hot cauldrons and boiling pools, they all add up to the greatest display of geothermal activity anywhere on Earth. And there's more. Like this great waterfall plunging into that yellow canyon, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone that gave the park its name. This park is our biggest wildlife refuge. And on top of that, the fly casting is almost too good to be true. Modern roads and vehicles have brought some of the farthest corners of our parks close to everyone. In Yellowstone, where less than a century ago tourists were killed by Indians, you can zip across America's largest national park in a couple of hours. Those warring Indians are gone, but with hungry bears on the prowl, you may not want to camp there in a tent. You won't have to if you're using one of the handy camping vehicles now on the market. We found that our camper is really quite comfortable. It rides much better than many people think a truck is riding. Seats are comfortable, it has enough power, goes freely on the highway, wind doesn't bother it very much. Really, it's a real good way to get around. The slower you go, the bigger the park seems to be. On the back roads and the trails, you can take all the time you want. We enjoy getting away into the remote areas, the back country. With the large wheels and the high clearance that our pickup has, we can get up dirt roads, back roads, really pretty primitive areas, places where a regular car might have some trouble. Well, let's go for a walk. Can I carry the knives? Yes, you can carry the knives if you want. Be real careful with the knives. Hi there. Come on. Nice heavy pack. Uh -huh. You gave me the heavy one this time, yeah. didn't you? Be real careful. Hi there. Okay. Bang it. Susie always has lots of questions to ask as we go on hikes, and we usually have a good answer for her. And hopefully, the information we provide will clarify it or get her on the right track, but to make her inquiring, to make her think for herself. She's getting to be pretty knowledgeable about nature now and very much at home. This is the kind of thing that is impossible in so many parts of the country today. It's so unusual, really, to find a place where the natural things are in abundance yet. Well, it's just kind of nice to get away. Two thousand miles to the east, where Tennessee and North Carolina meet, Great Smoky Mountains National Park. These are my mountains. My family, as far back as we know, have always lived in these mountains. They came over from England and settled here in these valleys around the Great Smoky Mountains. I suppose because of my heritage, the tranquility of the mountains is probably the most wonderful thing in my life.
since I was so happy over the fact that my cousin was finally coming from England to see where my branch of the family had settled here in the Smokies, my husband agreed to let us use our new camper to go up into the mountains and camp out for the weekend. These are rather unusual vehicles as far as I was concerned, because in England they don't put the caravan on the top of a truck. I couldn't also, believe that there was a fridge and a cooker with an oven and a sink. Some of the reasons a camping vehicle is such a convenience to you are the same reasons why it can be very easy on the land. Where you stay, you don't have to scatter your gear all over the landscape, nail things to trees, build fires, or pound stakes into the ground. And when you leave, there's nothing to pick up or load up. You just drive away. And when you stop, you can be on the trail in a matter of moments. To really appreciate the beauty of the wilderness, it is important to get away from the car and the main roads and to walk vast distances through the trails, which are very much today as they have been for centuries. An early American culture thrived here for oh, a couple of centuries. It was made up of self-reliant settlers who had no reason to push farther west. And some of their cabins and mills still stand. They even had a real telephone system among themselves. But for a long time, it had no connection with the outside world. This is the place I was telling you about right here. Of course, this is Uncle Bates' cabin back here. This was our Aunt Isabel's cabin over here. It's torn down now, but you can tell from the rocks where it was. Mm -hmm. With the mountains surrounding, mm -hmm. they were safe and protected, and they had their fresh water. You can see yeah. they had to grow their own corn, and uh, they had their own cattle, mm -hmm. horses, naturally. Mm -hmm. They hunted a lot for their food. The wild turkey was here. They fished in the streams for trout. They had to be a, a rough breed of people. In this region, there are many similarities to my own homeland. It's very much more beautiful. It's very, very refreshing. I could sense a certain affinity and understand why my forefathers could settle here. The Smokies are very popular with 8 million visitors a year. Another popular national park is Yosemite. Most of the people come in late spring and early summer. Right after Labor Day, the crowds are gone, and yet you still have a couple of months or more of mild weather. And in late fall and early winter, you just about have the place to yourself. Winter time. You and Yosemite. Plenty of comfortable lodgings kept open all winter, but so are some of the campgrounds. Just imagine having a big rotary snowplow open the way into your chosen campsite. Well, that's easy, but then imagine camping there without a warm, snug dwelling up off the ground. Where the tip of Florida merges with the sea, the Everglades, the river of grass. Now here's a vital wildlife refuge, a a sanctuary for wild creatures you seldom see anywhere else because their very survival depends on isolation. 
I suspect, too, that once in a while there's nothing better than isolation for ourselves. I really look forward to coming down here every year, just to get away from it all, to think, just to be with myself. During this time of the year, it rains quite a lot, but I really like it. I got my shelter here with me. The clouds are beautiful. They're just breathtaking. The color, the air, the sky, the reflections, you just have to see it. Some of the wildlife in the Everglades is virtually extinct everywhere else. But here, nature does seem to have a chance, and if you keep your eyes open, you may catch glimpses of animal life you've never seen before. You can camp here, but think twice before you decide on a tent. In this kind of a situation, I imagine everybody who goes camping would like to be in a recreational vehicle. Certainly nobody should mind the rain. It's helping to keep the Everglades alive and flowing with the fresh water that provides, among other things, that great fishing. This truck is just perfect for me. I can pack in my fishing tackle, my box. It all stows so nice and neat, and I have it all ready whenever I want to use it. When I get to some place, I can drop the trailer off go and see the places that I like to see. I'm not in any hurry, just poke along. If I feel like dropping a line in the water, I can. I don't care whether I catch anything or not. According to biologists, some of the creatures you see here, such as the brown pelican, have already thinned out below the point of no return. However, the only hope for survival for many species of wildlife is in our national parks. Sammy Hamilton operates sightseeing boats in the 10,000 Islands section of Everglades National Park. I think the park has actually done a good job to really keep it natural for the younger kids and stuff growing up to see this here, you know. I think it'd be very nice. There's another kind of maritime national park preserving a beautiful sample of the rock-bound coast of Maine, Acadia National Park. This is a little park compared to most. A small part of it is on the mainland, but more is in scattered bits and pieces covering about half of Mount Desert Island. Here, too, fresh water goes down to the sea, but steeply, through woods and over rocks. And then it mingles with the tides that rise and fall as much as 20 feet and in themselves form tumbling streams, streams that flow not only into the ocean when the tide is low, but also back into inland basins when the tide is high. This is country that bustles with people in summer, but is very quiet in the fall, when it joins with the rest of New England in putting on a show of color that's worth going a long way to see. When the air is nippy and the places to eat and sleep begin to close down for the winter, 
That's when you really appreciate having a motor home, which is a kind of home away from home and can go where you want to go besides. People come up here all summer long, but me, I prefer it like this, when it's quiet and where you can spend the whole day doing what you want to do. In the summertime, it's kind of hustle, bustle, and it's very commercial, you know, and uh, some people love that. They enjoy it. Tourists, they, they, it's the only chance they get, so they have to come. And uh, they live in motels, and if it rains, they can't go anywhere. Traveling in that travel cruiser motorhome, that's something. You know, I don't care whether it's rainy or foggy or what it is. We can go out any time we feel like it and stay as long as we want and be perfectly dry and comfortable. That's great. You know, it's so quiet here that it kind of gets to you. You know, it kind of closes you down. It's very relaxing. I enjoy it. In the Great Smokies, we cherish abandoned relics of the past. But the ways of life in and around Acadia, though picturesque and unfamiliar to many of us, even old-fashioned here and there, are those of America's present. That's one reason the park is so broken up and is going to stay that way, leaving room for the people of the region to live and work. All these lobster pots and uh, crabs and so forth, uh, you know what that is, Joe? No. That's, that's a pot buoy. And uh, this sets in the water like this, and the traps are attached, uh, or at least a, a buoy line to the trap. And uh, these stripes uh, on this particular one, uh, around the sides here, in this hot pink color, yeah. uh, this design here identifies this pot buoy as belonging to a, a certain fisherman. So this uh, basically uh, follows fish six, seven months up the year. Canyonlands National Park in that wonderfully lonesome southeast corner of Utah is known as a wilderness park, although it does have roads of sorts, but they're not the kind you try unless you have four-wheel drive, as I have in this blazer. I was nearly out of water, so I headed up the Elephant Hill Road toward a little spring I know, but I never got there. Bates? Hi, Mark. How are you? 
Oh, pretty good. Thank guys to see you made it this far. Yeah, didn't do bad. Well, you really got the rig to do her, though. Well, you're getting a little behind in your highway program around here, aren't you? Yeah, we are, but we intend to keep it this way. An awful yeah. lot of people like it, just as it is. Me too, as long as I got this kind of an outfit. Uh -uh. Keep them busy? Yeah, but not so busy I can't enjoy life. Got the family down here, yeah. camp. How about coming down and have supper with them? Sure. Well, no, you want to drive this? I'd love to. All right, do it. Bates Wilson, the superintendent, is known far and wide as Mr. Canyonlands. He's the man most identified with the creation of the park, and he's dedicated to the principle of keeping it as natural and beautiful as possible by holding development to an absolute minimum. I camped with him and his family, and then we went exploring. Some of these really spectacular ancient Indian murals are not renowned because they've only been discovered in the last few months. They're going to remain as hard to find as they were at first. But who knows? You may be the next discoverer when you turn a corner somewhere and find yourself face to face with something just as exciting. That's how unexplored this country is. The bare sandstone looks forbidding sometimes, but it's the kind of rock that feels mighty good underfoot. This is called the Joint Trail. Have you ever seen anything like it? It's perfectly natural. Sections of it follow straight cracks or joints in the rock. The Joint Trail is like a secret entrance into the wide, cliff-encircled expanse of Chesler Park. But Chesler Park is just a dot in this great land, which is uninhabited now, but once supported Indians by the thousands. talked about this place and its future, about the deep significance of the national park idea, and about the practical importance of our national park system. Here are your greatest opportunities to get close to nature, to let it enrich your life and refresh your spirit. And here the finest examples of America's original grandeur are waiting for you, any time you take to the road. <laughs> 